Hello everyone, this is Walter Fate, and I'm back once again to bring you stories about neckbeards. I was actually going to work on something else, but then I saw this story and kind of wanted to cover it. If it's not long enough, I'll just cover some posts at the end of the video. Anyway, let's get started with more Reddit neckbeards. Neckbeards are usually nerds with overinflated egos. They don't have to be fat, they don't have to smell, they don't even need the beard because it's the beard on the inside that counts. This guy is a great example though, so if you don't know yet, you're about to. This is a post from Reddit Just Neckbeard Things, Neckbeard Central on Reddit. The biggest mistake I've ever made. So let me tell you about the neckbeard I dated. So we sort of met in English class. We had to go around the room and introduce ourselves with an interesting fact. He introduced himself, hey, what's up, my name's John Doe. A few weeks later, he interrupts a conversation I was having with a friend before class. I remembered him, asked him if he was John Doe. He said, hey, why don't we meet up and talk? He seemed pretty nice guy that I might want to be friends with, so I agreed. I showed up and waited. He never showed up. I walked up to him the next Monday and asked what was up, and he said, oh, I was there, I guess we just didn't see each other. So we hung out that night. Immediately, he mentioned his ex, who broke up with him sophomore year of high school, and then made several unwanted references to his dick. He even made several offhand comments about how he was impressed that I would eat a burger in front of him because girls are always too afraid to eat. I later found out that he intentionally stood me up that Friday because if you didn't say anything about me standing you up, then you're not the kind of lady that I want to be out with. I should have ended things right there. I didn't. Now let me paint you a picture. This man is over 300 pounds. A total weeb who is obsessed with Dragon Ball, has his hair parted down the middle and rarely wears anything other than sweatpants or pajama pants and ratty tank tops with holes. For some reason he even wore those pedophile glasses like Napoleon Dynamite. I'm usually not one to judge by appearance, but it should have tipped me off. By the way, I'm not generally attracted to men, so I figured I might eventually grow to like him because he seemed nice and funny. It turns out that he was just maniacally clever and manipulative. I'm kind of a nerd, so I like being around fellow nerdy people, and our friend group soon grew around us, so it was impossible not to become close to him as a friend. I mean, we were in the same LARP club, should have been a clue, and in the same crew that gamed in the lobby. A few more things, however, should have tipped me off about his character, though. He would brag about how he could control and manipulate people, and was absolutely proud about how we had become friends because it was somehow so clever of him to test me and stand me up like that. He would talk about how he had gotten into bar fights or how he had slipped drugs to a friend. He would frequently tell the story of how he mailed boxes of dildos to his principal in high school because she needed to loosen up. Gross. He then began to manipulate and play games with my friends, getting them to do things that they wouldn't want to do normally, all the while bragging to me. He would also make pretty sexist comments about females, and would also make the occasional racist comment too. He would call all women petty bitches, yet for some reason would fall back on the fact that most of his friends were women when confronted with his blaring sexism. Fast forward a few months, and he had been trying to manipulate me into dating him. I really only wanted to be friends, but he wanted more. He kept withholding information, questions I'd ask, where the group was hanging out, etc., saying, I'll tell you if you date me. He changed our names in the chat to Mr. Wifey and Mrs. Hubby. Finally, he manipulated me into saying I love you, which he then replied, Now you'll be my girlfriend, right? In context, I was saying I love you to my fellow girlfriends, and without thinking, turned to him and said it in the same way that I meant for my other friends. I was so overwhelmed, I didn't know what to say. This guy had wedged himself in there as one of my best friends, and I'm a clingy bitch with codependent tendencies, and I absolutely didn't want to hurt him. So I said yes, I mean, you're supposed to be good friends with your significant other, right? He immediately forced me to hold his hand and to cuddle him, and I didn't know how to say no. I had already been platonically snuggled up to my best friend that night while watching the movie. He said it was the same and that we should because it would make him happy and we were dating now. He decided to propose two weeks into our relationship even though we had not yet gone on a single date. I was extremely uncomfortable but laughed it off. He ended up proposing three times that day, much to my discomfort. He even called me his waifu. He'd make extremely off-color comments that clearly objectified me. We ended up dating for about a year and a half, part of that being long distance. Part of me didn't have the heart to break it off. Part of me was deluding myself into thinking that this could work out because we were friends. Let me remind you, this guy was highly manipulative, and I'm extremely manipulable. He started telling people at work that he was engaged and would constantly call me his fiancé to his friends. I had never said yes to any of this. I finally decided to get a job at a camp near his house for the summer to spend some time with him. I stayed at his parents' house over one weekend, in his bedroom. He slept elsewhere on the couch, 
and he instructed me to sleep on top of one of the blankets. First of all, he doesn't use sheets on his bed, and his bed was suspiciously stained and nasty. I asked to borrow his computer to do some preparation for next semester. He eyed me suspiciously and said, Don't look at my browser history. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, you won't find anything. The first thing that popped up as I went to look up a link for student loans was Hentai Monster Girl Porn Big Tits XXX. I thought, okay, gross, but that could be a fluke. I went to check his history and, damn, the computer was used almost solely for porn. The first thing I realized was that this was disgusting. The second thing that I realized was that I could check the timeline of his porn. Every time he had gone to the bathroom, every time I was not looking or talking with someone else during our dates, he was looking at porn. Even at church when he was supposedly helping in the children's ministry. I then began to realize how often he had jerked off around my presence, and how often I had been oblivious. Then I discovered I could see his current phone history, as in what he was currently looking at. It was nasty, kinky stuff that I don't have the vocabulary to explain. He was messaging me from the other room and jerking off to it. I confronted him the next morning, and he claimed it was his brother's Chrome account. I showed him proof that it was on his phone that moment, that he was looking at it, in front of his cousins and younger siblings. He was quiet and then took my hand and then blamed me for finding this out, and that, it's okay, we'll get through this. I don't know why I was so gullible or why I stayed for long. It took forever to get out of his control and he took advantage of me in so many ways. So yeah. I can't even really imagine why you'd want to date someone if you could tell they didn't really want to date you. Well, anyway, yeah, this guy sucks and he sounds pretty gross too. No idea how they manage to get these relationships sometimes. Maybe he was confused about how as well and that's why he was so insistent on proposing as quickly as possible. By the way, I would recommend nobody here looked at my browser history either. It's not the same as this guy's, but it's probably not the greatest. How do you even manage to date someone you're not attracted to? I think I'd cringe myself to death being near some obese guy who wears sweatpants and goes around acting like he's classier than everyone else. Anyway, that's the story, so now, let's go look for some more content. As a self-described ladies' man, I could hear a familiar playful lust in that young man's tone of voice. I truly believe that any toxicity you received after speaking on the mic and revealing your female persuasion was not so much toxicity as it was something akin to playground flirting, where a little boy tries to tease a little girl that he has a crush on. Tis a strange and juvenile tactic, I know, but I would be interested in knowing if it worked on you at all. I can clearly tell you would not like to play Overwatch with this person ever again, but do you feel as though you've been seduced? Ciao. Ah, alright, so whatever a man does is just playground flirting. And no, I don't think a woman is seduced by someone ruining her fucking game. I know I'm not. Western women are being corrupted by feminism. It warps them into thinking that if they act feminine, they are seen as weak, oppressed females. That's why our females are less feminine than Eastern females. They think being submissive, feminine, is being oppressed. What they don't realize is that the male, while courting, submits himself to doing anything within his power to get approval from the female. It's a sad movement that destroys the beauty of human interaction. The small things, like feminine laughing and cute clothes. Ah shit, did women stop wearing cute clothes? I hadn't even noticed yet. Seriously, are all the women this guy knows really so manly, or does he just not have any female friends? And don't use the word courting, Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different. Have you ever heard of the tectonic hybrid? Probably not. It was a failed Kickstarter that failed pretty badly. I know Retsupre covered it. I'm not going to be commenting on the expandable staff itself because this isn't a Kickstarter video, but just let me kill the music real quick and show you this guy. You'll see why. This is like the sequel to Star Wars Kid. Yeah, I'm really dating myself with that reference. I know, I know, I can just hear the comments now. Uh, Walter, you're supposed to bring us cringe, but that guy looked like a legitimate badass. Yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks to all my subscribers, and if you're new here and enjoyed the content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more of the same. I actually spent all yesterday looking for a terrible piece of fiction from back in the day, so my plan is to upload a reading of it sometime tonight. If you're not interested in that, you obviously don't have to watch, but remember that it's bonus content, I'm making this in addition, not instead of a neckbeard video. 
I need to kind of try to expand my channel. In more news, I'm about to have my new PC set up within the next week, so I can start streaming. We'll see how that goes. For now, a big thanks to my generous patrons. I actually can't be monetized currently, so that obviously helps me out a lot. I've already decided to quit YouTube several times, and I always change my mind eventually because I like making videos. Well, anyway, thanks to all the neckbeards of the world and everyone who posted to that subreddit. And thanks to Abigail. Have a great day, everyone, and be wary about checking your boyfriend's browser history. <laughs>